Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to make a, a demonstration on pinch pots and then how to put this together to make a pod project. So the first step is to wedge your clay and get it kind of a place where there's not a lot of cracks or air pockets in there. You'll need two somewhat equally shaped blocks of clay to start with. So you can see when you put clay together that it really is a lot of cracks and it's just not very pretty. So we just need to wedge that. to the place where you're getting the air and the cracks and everything kind of condensed. So here's a little bit of an air pocket. You can see right there. Um, you're going to need your slip for this. So we use the broken bone dry pot to make your slip. And you put it into the container with some water. And the nice thing about these containers is you can really shake them up to incorporate or get your slip nice and concise. Okay, so then... I got these two blocks of clay that are equal-ish in size and shape, or more size than shape. And then I'm just going to use the palm of my hand to kind of beat out the corners and try to turn this into a ball. As I do this, I'm continuing to wedge the clay. If there is a place where you have like a major crack, you just kind of pound that out even more. If you have a couple, it's not super good. So yeah, you really want to try to get this as like packed down and condensed on itself as that you can. All right, so I have a little bit of a crack right here, but I think I'll let that start my the hole of my pinch pot. So now, just gonna start forming the hole down to the bottom. It's still really thick on all the sides. So now I'm gonna start thinning from the bottom down here pinch my thumb to my fingers and I'm turning the pot a little bit as I go. Thing with a pinch pot is you want it to be as symmetrical as you can. I know it's hand built so it's going to have the organic, um, a little bit of an organic feel to it rather than like a wheel thrown bowl. But still you want to have, um, it's somewhat symmetrical. Um, so that's the shape of mine. It kind of depends on the, the size and shape of your hands. If you have really long fingers, you might get more of an elongated pinch pot. Notice I'm gonna leave this kind of lip that I have here. I don't, and I'm getting s slight cracks, but that's okay. I'm gonna, this can actually be used to my advantage. So now I'm going to make my second pinch pot. Again, when I build or kind of burrow that hole, I'm going to just kind of turn it and press down. So I'm trying to keep that hole symmetrical in there. Now I'm going to start thinning. bottom. It kind of looks like a mushroom. I'm thinning here first. 
Oh, you see that right there? That's an air pocket that just popped. Pretty major air pocket. Air does not do well. And I mean, it just absolutely does not get along with the kiln. So when air is warmed, it expands. When clay is dry, it can no longer expand. So if you have a project to put into the kiln with any kind of an air pocket and you don't know about it uh, beforehand and you let it dry and then it gets placed into the kiln, we will find, we'll find out after we open the kiln that you had an air pocket because the air will expand within that clay body. And if I wouldn't have found this, this side of the pot would have popped off. It, there would have been a chunk blown out of here. Um, so yeah, we can't contain air. There always has to be an air release. So at this point, this was an ugly, you know, this is kind of a little marred area on my pot now, but it's better to have that than to have an air pocket hidden down in there. Um, because now the air is not trapped in there anymore. Okay. So I was, you know, I got a little bit, but the main thing with these, um, with the pod project is you want the rim, this and the top rims to be somewhat the same diameter. So this one's just a little bit smaller. So let's kind of pinch it out a little bit. they match okay so next I gotta get some tools out I'm gonna use the rip tool with the little spines on it little teeth I'm gonna rough up the lip of my pot. And just like this bag has a zipper and the teeth on either side lock together to keep this, you know, closed or open. That's what this concept is as well. When you rough up both surfaces, it's going to allow the slip or slurry to get down into all of those little nooks and crannies. And when I press these guys together with the slurry in there, they're gonna lock together. They're gonna be locked in place. So you can use the slurry straight out of, out of this or if you have a little container at home, you guys could pour a little bit into a container so it's easier to access. Um, you can use your finger. Your finger will wash. If you absolutely don't want your fingers dirty, if you have like a craft more of a craft brush at home. You can use a little craft brush, paint brush. Um, you can do that too. So just make sure you get the slurry all around the whole thing. Or you could use your sponge. Maybe I should have done that. Wipe your fingers off. Okay. So now I'm going to place these two together. Now this project is, is kind of cool because you can make an actual closed container, right? And it's a little slippery at first, but if you just kind of carefully kind of work yourself around, just make sure you're matching it up. And what I'm doing here is I'm applying pressure to or kind of on either you know pinch pot so that I'm trying to get that 
that zipper, if you will, that roughed up area, the scoring that we did to adhere. So if I kind of twist just slightly, not a lot, because I don't want to break the pot, but if I slightly twist, slightly twist, twist and push, twist and push. All right. I'm just, you know, working on those two to become one. Okay, so now I can either use the sky gun um, or I could use the rib tool that is not, doesn't have teeth. Sometimes I like to start with this one and I like to just scratch the surface. I'm going to go first one direction, unless I have a big bump like right there. Peeling the potato. Like it's gonna look kind of like a big potato in a second. The reason why I like to use this is because it really cuts down into the clay and helps to kind of get rid of any big bumps that I don't want. So that it just kind of removes a little bit but it kind of mushes it around. Helps me shape the pot. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little test here. We're gonna do a little bit of a more of a wiggle and a twist. Not a big one, but just a little bit of a wiggle and a twi twist and maybe even a little bit of a pull. Like right here, do you guys see? There's a little bit of a crack forming right there. I need a little bit more work here. So you want to put some tension on this pod that you're making in order to find any weak spots. Now, I think I got a good seal, because the reason why I know this is because, oops, maybe right here, is because what I'm doing is I'm trapping the air inside of this. And if you really get your air trapped inside of this, we don't want to leave it trapped inside, but while we're making it, we want to have the air trapped because the air pressure will help us form our project. So what I've, I've trapped the air and it's kind of like a flat football. Kind of, that's what it feels like. It feels like a flat, needs to be aired up ball. I guess it doesn't need to be a football, but a ball. I think that might have been my air pocket that I popped up earlier. Okay, cool. So these cracks right here, again, I can just take my rip tool, scratch it up. I'm gonna do this the whole thing.
So on your um, pod project, uh, I highly encourage you to do some sort of a texture. Now this is, I mean, a go-to texture because you already have the tool, but think of other textures you could put onto your uh, pod project. These are kind of like um, seed pods, if you will. Like think of a, a seed pod that you'd find out in nature. Think about the kind of textures that you'd find on something out there in nature. Or you could make these into more functional pieces. You make a birdhouse, put a little hole in it, and make a little perch, have a little birdhouse. They can be decorative items that you put on a shelf. Now, if I don't want that texture anymore, this kind of uh, grooved pattern that I ended up on here, I can take this smoother rip tool with no grooves and I can come back and I can now smooth it all down. Um, you can burnish this. You could let this dry and, you know, take a tool and make it kind of shiny by burnishing the project. You could uh, use some of your ceramic tools and carve into it. You know, carve down into, not the whole thing, not through it, but you could carve the pattern into it. I could cut eye holes out for some reason now. I just see some eyes right here. I could cut some eye holes and make like, start to make like an owl or something. So think about all those ideas that you could come up with for this kind of a shape and this kind of a project. And what would you want to make? Be sure you're drawing out these ideas you might have an idea and draw it out in your sketchbook and then maybe you make it and you think, oh man, I think I want to do something else now. And that can happen too. You know, you can have ideas and it's okay to let, uh, to let us see that evolution of idea. Make sure though that you are coming up with your own idea. Don't, don't copy and make something that's already been done before. Don't do some cartoon animal or, uh, or figure, object, subject. <laughs> um, make sure you're doing your own thing. Sometimes the clay will say, hey, I want you to make this. Just kind of listen to what you're thinking about and what you see what starts to happen. Okay, so I kind of got that smoothed out. I can use my thumb to smooth out even more. But now I can do this. This is kind of fun. I can roll my project on my cloth here and I can shape it even more. Let me get all your little glitchy stuff off here. So maybe I kind of want this to be pointed a little bit more. Again, that air pressure that's trapped inside right now is helping me um, form this. Now, if I press too hard, I could pop a hole. Like the air pressure could just bust right out of one of these, you know? So I gotta be somewhat still careful. Okay, 
I'm just kind of getting rid of some of those divots that I had earlier. You could take um, take one of your tools and you could cut negative space in here so you could actually see through. Uh, you could make it a lantern or something for a candle. But don't make a Mr. Potato Head. If you get any major cracks like this, you can use a little slip. Just kind of hydrate your clay again. Sometimes if your clay dries out, you will get lots of little cracks, which isn't a big deal. You don't have to fight them all, but if they're looking like they're kind of major cracks, that's not good. All of your little extra pieces can go in your slip. Craftsmanship will show up on the rubric, so make sure whatever your intention is, you're doing it somewhat neat. Um, that doesn't mean everything has to be nice and smooth. We definitely can have textures on things, but the textures shouldn't have a whole lot of these little, like, little glitchy things kind of stuck on it. All right, let me roll it around a little bit more, get all my little bits and pieces off here. See if any more cracks show up. I think probably some will show up at the end down here because I haven't done this part yet. Yep, right here. So that slip will help rehydrate, help smooth out like any of those major, major, major cracks that you can't just get rid of by kind of going over them with your hands, your fingers. Again, if you have any little uh, recyclable like plastic or anything like that that you can use to put your slip in out of the big container might make things like getting the slip faster, more handy for you. And then you just pour that back into the container to keep it from drying out when you're ready to clean up. Um, if you do have a plastic container, you always keep it in your box too, so you can use it at school as well. That's a full opening right there, guys. So that might help me figure out what I want to do with my project here, because in the end, we can't keep the air completely entrapped in this without having some release holes. We have to have some release holes. Um, because if we just had this whole thing encased with no release holes and we put this in the kiln, it would, it would bust open. The air would expand and it would have nothing, nowhere to uh, go. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is do some negative spaces and maybe make that candle holder I was talking about earlier. So any clay that's coming away, I can throw back in my bag. It's supposed to be like a lantern. So who would I give this to? Um, you know, I could give it to my sister. She's a massage therapist. She might appreciate having something in her massage therapy studio. She's over in Lawrence that she can put a scented candle or something in. 
and have lit. If you can't do free-handed circles, if you're not comfortable with it, you can always get a circle, like some sort of something to trace and trace them on here first. Now I'm not thinking a great big candle. This would be for a tea light. Like little, one of those little candles in the little metal. Now, when the candle is smoking, we want to have a hole at the top here too, so that the smoke and the heat can go out the top. Okay, so since I opened this up, you can kind of see my inside needs to be cleaned up a little bit. If you don't open them up, you don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to take my thumb through my ax, the holes that I've cut, and just kind of smear some of that clay around on the inside so it's not as clumpy, clumsy looking. I can kind of look at the overall look of my creation here. Maybe cut a couple more circles on this side. Cut this one just a little bigger so I can get the candle in like this particular area here. Just slide it in. So this is where I would put the candle in and out. So I could maybe cut another circle here. So there's a pod project, still needs a lot more cleaning up. Um, if I wanted to continue to work on this, then I want to go ahead and bag it really well. because it's still a little sticky. So if you feel like your projects are kind of hard to clean up and work with, um, you can leave them kind of rest in a bag for a little bit. Uh, make sure it's closed because you don't want it to dry out completely, but make sure you, you can let them rest and then you can come back. And I don't necessarily need to add any kind of pattern or anything out here yet. I can wait for that to become leather hard before I start carving maybe additional designs kind of out here in the positive space. Um, again, the inside needs some more cleanup so I can continue to do that. Also, um, as, as it gets just a little bit more set up and a little bit more sturdy, it's kind of, kind of fragile and kind of floppy right now if you will so anyway so that that's putting two pinch pots together and then figuring out something that you want to do with that some sort of creation with that all right and then bag it up clean up your tools come back to it on another day to finish the uh cleanup and surface decoration <laughs>